because you are representative of your wife. You are both representing each other. And if you're talking like that and your wife is not very comfortable with it, my advice to you, brother, is that, you know, you take your wife's advice. Seriously, she seems to be, you know, controlling the discussion a little bit more, has a little bit more, once again, self-control. So, you know, you take her advice, have a filter. My life. This conversation is... Okay, so this is the part we had a big problem. Yeah, yeah this it's is so issue. dumb. Why? Because it's dumb for me. It's really dumb for me. Because before I met Dina... Before I met Dina? Before I met Dina, I, I was I like, Dina. is this a thing? Is this a thing? What women wear? I know I know it sounds dumb because I'm Muslim. And, I'm, and I used to actually be religious. Are you not religious now? I want to say religious, but I used to be like on the dean. Are you not now? Are you not on the dean now? I'm a little bit. I think you're quite. I I think I'm a balanced. I think I'm a better person for sure. I'm a better person now than I was before when I was on the D. All right, so just yeah. this seems yeah. to be the biggest, most egregious problem with his comment. He is saying, if I've understood it correctly, because it's completely apparent from what he's yeah. saying. And this is what really triggered us. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, this he is, is something that really upset us. He is, he is using a comparative in the English language, the word better, to signify that his life or his morality had improved as a result of distancing himself away from the deen, uh, religion, and in this specific example, Islam. My first question to him would be, from where do you get your moral anchorage? How do you derive morality? Where do you choose, how do you know what is right and wrong? From where do you get what is right and wrong? You know, from an, on an objective level. So here, because the thing is, we as Muslims, we believe, as you know, that Allah, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth, he sent prophets. And these prophets are sinless prophets who guide people to the straight path. The Quran says, In kuntum Allah, Allah. If you love Allah, then follow me, i.e. the Prophet Muhammad, and Allah will love you back. So the maximally perfect model, the uswatun hasana, from an Islamic perspective, is the Prophet Muhammad and all the other prophets that came. What does that mean, uswatun hasana? It's, it's, a, it's like a perfect example, yeah? So if you're saying that by getting closer to this model, you're becoming a worse person, then this would contradict the premise of Islam on a fundamental level. So you need to reassess. My advice to you, brother, um, would be for you to reassess where do you actually get your morality from? What do you consider a good thing? What do you consider a bad thing? What do you consider what makes you good, what makes you bad, and these things? As Muslims, we say, that which is closer to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad and all the other prophets are good things. And those which are further away from it are bad things. And finally, I want to say one other thing, which I feel um, a little bit ironic in a sense. And this might sound a little bit harsh, and I apologize if it does come across like that. I'm not trying to be like that here, but it seems like um, your wife, obviously... She was a, is it a hijabi tutorialist or something like that, yeah? So clearly, she relied on a Muslim community in order to propel herself to this position that she's in, to make a living. You were assisted by her on going to social media. And it seems like now, this is the feeling, that you're biting the hand that fed you. Because the Muslim community, who um, are being referenced implicitly throughout this whole podcast, uh, the hijabi community, these things, and... The, the Muslim community who brought you up, now you're trying to distance yourself away from them and you're kind of almost kind of placing blame on them. But this part here is even more egregious than that because you're saying that the deen itself, the religion itself, being further away from it has improved you. So you're going to have to retract that statement, in my opinion, and you're going to have to reconsider where you get your morality from. Mm. Otherwise, it's just going to be a case of yeah. You, you, you could have, you could have said Muslim, you can say Muslims. Some some Muslims. No, no. It's just going to be a case. It's just going to yeah. be a case of for me, like uh, someone, yeah, who who has has internally, has internalized like a mm. colonial criticism of Islam. Mm. Yeah, Oriental yeah. criticism of Islam. And, this is, this and that's is, what you yeah. come across as, to be honest. Yeah. With you. Sometimes said you come across as someone mm. who's trying trying to yeah. overprove. Uh, his liberalism, oh, I'm moderate, I'm liberal and these things, mm. distancing this this yourself away from Islam. And mm. throughout the podcast, when your wife tried to have a few meaningful conversations about religion, you seem to want to move away from that. So I would say, look, man, reassess the purpose of life, mm. to be yeah, honest with you. because you know, Allah SWT says in the Quran, the people of the book will never be happy with you until you leave 
your religion is simple as that, brother. Mm. You know, and it's very important for all of us. It's a reminder to me Until to you educate. Follow their there, way. yeah, we need to educate ourselves on Islam because mm. if you truly, like, I'm sure you do. I'm just saying, if you went a bit in detail and studied your religion, you will understand the beauty of it and not say, oh, it made me. I'm a better person than I was before. But let's see what Dina says about this. Uh, but like, but you're practicing Muslim. Yeah, like a lot of, I don't. Do you see that the fact that Sister Dina had to come in there and interject and say that you are practicing?